Hi, my name is Morgan and I am a neuroscience researcher currently working to get my PhD in neuroscience. This is my first neuroscience history video. So in my neuroscience history videos, I just want to explain a little bit of what happened in neuroscience in the past because it's wild. People in the past didn't understand the brain. We still, to this day, don't understand the brain. That's why I have a job. So, um, so people did some crazy stuff. Um, so this first one, I thought I would make it the one that everyone sort of knows about, but I don't, I think doesn't know the details of lobotomies. So this video isn't going to be a comprehensive history of lobotomies because there's a lot to unpack there but there's one specific guy in the history of lobotomies who i really want to talk about because he he did some crazy stuff and i think more people need to know his name and more people need to talk about him so this guy's name is walter freeman and he was an american neurologist back in the 1930s and he invented what is now known as the ice pick lobotomy um which i'm sure everyone knows about but I will describe for a second. So this is my skull that I have all of the parts of the uh, skull bones labeled. If you take a basic anatomy class, they'll go over the bones of the skull. Um, even though there, it seems to be all one consistent bone, it's not actually. It's separated into a bunch of different parts. Anyway, <laughs> a traditional lobotomy uh, was actually a prefrontal lobotomy which this is your frontal bone underneath this is the frontal lobe of the brain so they would remove bits of the skull and go in there and remove bits of the brain this guy walter freeman was like i know of a more efficient way to get to that part of the brain i'm gonna do a transorbital lobotomy what is a transorbital lobotomy you might ask this is to where your eye sits right here if you poke in it just right, you can poke inside of the eye without damaging the eye. So this is still done in some procedures. Um, I, I'm not an eye scientist. I don't know uh, exactly why you would want to do this, but people do it still as, as like a medical procedure. Not the lobotomy part of it, but sticking something in that part of the eye. So you can stick something in that part of the eye without damaging the eye. And behind the eye is the brain. So what you would do is take things that look like ice picks, hence the name ice pick lobotomy, and stick them behind the eye and just sort of wiggle it around a little bit, mush up that part of the brain, and then that part of the brain is no longer functional. So it's the same thing as taking it out, basically, without having to take it out, um, which was an idea that he had. And he did this. So he took ice picks, put them in there, mushed it around, hurt the brain. <laughs> but your brain doesn't have any pain receptors, so your brain actually wouldn't feel the pain of it. It You just wouldn't have that part of the brain functioning anymore. So Walter Freeman actually believed that by doing these lobotomies, he was removing excess emotions in the brain, and then you wouldn't have those emotions anymore. He was somewhat correct about this, because if you take an ice pick and you mush around inside of the brain, people tend to calm down a lot. <laughs> So he had very- I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing because it's awkward and I'm upset that this ever happened to people. But he, uh, he had varied results. Some of his patients would get better. And what he meant by that was that they would calm down. So maybe these people had schizophrenia and they would be freaking out that they were hearing voices in their heads. After he did a lobotomy, they wouldn't be freaking out anymore. They would not be able to talk. <laughs> So, he fixed them. Uh, he also, sometimes people wound up paralyzed. People, like I said, couldn't speak. They couldn't think properly. They would like have drool hanging out of their mouths. Like they, they just weren't, like, like they were alive, but they weren't. Like they, he didn't fix them. <laughs> like he didn't do a good thing to them. So um, you might ask like, well, why in the world? Did he do this if he had these results? Oh, also he killed people. <laughs> that, that might be important. And some, some people died because whenever you stab someone's brain, that happens. So he, um, so like why? Why in the world would anyone do this? Well, this was back in the 1930s onto the 1950s. And he 
people were desperate and I don't I don't think that justifies it but I think that helps us get in the mindset of where these people were we still don't have a proper treatment for some of the mental illnesses that he was trying to cure so he wanted to help people initially we'll get on to a bit where he definitely didn't help people and he definitely didn't have good intentions whenever he was doing these things but people were just desperate they just they had family members suffering from mental illness some people were suicidal some people had severe depression and anxiety and they just wanted it gone and i empathize with that lobotomies were not the answer and we know that oh um so on to some of his patients he did operate on teddy roosevelt's sister which is wild um he also operated um he, he wanted to operate on patients who were suffering from these incurable mental illnesses. So the biggest one that he operated on was schizophrenia. I'm gonna read off of my laptop here because uh, I'm about to give you a quote. So someone, I, I couldn't figure out who exactly took out this ad. I assume that it was Freeman, but it could have possibly been someone else doing lobotomies because he wasn't the only one, he was just, the most famous and the most popular but um someone took out an ad in the new york times advertising these lobotomies for people with quote tension apprehension anxiety depression insomnia suicidal ideas delusions hallucinations crying spells melancholia which is fancy old-timey doctor talk for sadness um obsessions panic states disorientation psychogesia which is um, anxieties having to do with psychiatric problems, uh, nervous indigestion, and hysterical paralysis, which can only happen to women because hysteria. End quote, aside from the things that I obviously inserted whenever I turned away from the camera. Um, but Freeman's favorite patients always had schizophrenia. That was his favorite one to operate on. One of the things that Freeman is most famous for is that he he did these lobotomies and he wanted to train other doctors on how to do these lobotomies he wanted to spread the knowledge and to do that he would travel to other hospitals and just all across the country he would travel to these hospitals and do his ice pick lobotomies and he became quite the showman and so he would advertise that he was doing lobotomies in 10 minutes a 10 minute procedure to cure schizophrenia would be amazing but it was awful and tragic but um he also the the more famous that he got the more popular they got also the more cocky that he was and so he decided to shock his audience his words he wanted to shock his audience by performing these ice pick lobotomies with both hands in both eyes so he would take one patient two ice picks at the same time that is a thing that he did and a thing that he's very well known for um obviously this did not go well and he killed several patients doing this the last time that walter freeman performed a lobotomy was in 1967 which is not that long ago and the reason why he stopped doing lobotomies wasn't because he was like hey I'm not doing a great thing here. I realize that this is hurting more patients than it's helping. No, the reason that he stopped was because he was banned from doing lobotomies because he had a patient that he performed a lobotomy on three times and she died on the third time from a brain hemorrhage. Don't know why I took that, but it did. So um, he was banned from doing lobotomies all in total it's estimated that he did around 2500 of these ice pick lobotomies and even more of just the normal lobotomies now there's a lot of crazy stories from his lobotomy days but the craziest one that i found was his youngest patient his youngest patient was a 12 year old boy and you might be like oh wow what what severe mental illness did he have that made someone want to do this operation on a 12 year old boy and that was my question too the 12 year old boy's symptoms that were worthy of a lobotomy on a 12 year old were that he was defiant he daydreamed 
and he objected to going to bed. Sounds worthy of a lobotomy to me. No. And according to stories, the boy's mom had gone to several different doctors telling them this, and all the doctors told her, you have a normal 12 year old son. But no, he needed a lobotomy and Freeman was the one to do it. So uh, this 12 year old boy is now 70 ish approximately. Last I could tell this boy um, is, is now a man and he is a bus driver and there's been a lot of interviews with him because he's like this was long enough ago that not many of the patients are still alive not to mention not many of the patients survived um so like not many survived to now so this guy has done a lot of interviews and um in the interviews he said that he doesn't really feel that different from other people aside from knowing that he had a lobotomy and he also says that he feels like he's missing a part of his soul which is just tragic that anyone would have to live with that but especially a 12 year old had to go through that and they like he wasn't there was nothing wrong with him like i can almost get like if you're if you're desperate for a cure if you have a family member who absolutely they are not present and like you can't get through to them you can't break through there's no medications that can help almost i can see how one would be so desperate i hope to god that i would never have done that but i can see how someone would be that desperate but a 12 year old boy who doesn't want to go to bed on time that's all of them. Don't have kids if you don't want to deal with that. Like, oh, wow. So that is the story, approximately. <laughs> that is the story of Walter Freeman. Um, like I said, this is not a comprehensive history of lobotomies. This is literally one guy, but he had a lot to do with popularizing lobotomies in America. Um, and surprisingly, I looked into it. Lobotomies are still legal. They're illegal in Germany and some other European countries, but not in the US. So have fun with that knowledge. Um, obviously they're not performed commonly as like a medical procedure. Obviously they're not performed commonly as like a medical procedure. Um, what, what the modern day lobotomy looks like is more, it's called a lobectomy which an ectomy, if it's added on to the end of any medical phrase, is just removal of that part, like an appendectomy is removing the appendix, lobectomy is removing a lobe um, of the brain, and um, it's, it's really treated as like a last resort, but it still happens today. There could be one happening at this exact moment, who knows? But like I said, this isn't meant to be a comprehensive history. Also, if you want me to talk about lobectomies, they're wild. I see why we still use them to an extent. Uh, yeah, if you want me to do a full history of lobotomy, I kind of really do want to do one of those. But if you want it, leave a comment below. I listen to you guys. I'm here to answer your questions. This is just a story that I thought people would find interesting. Um, also, if you want me to do lobectomies, those are, like I said, like a crazy concept to me. And so I would totally do a video on lobectomies. Um, they commonly used to treat seizures. If you want a video on seizures, leave a comment. Um, and anything else that you're just curious about in neuroscience um, or research, I can, yeah. So just leave a comment below if you want any of those things or if you like this series, if you think I should keep on doing neuroscience history, um, let me know below and thank you.